Okay, this lecture is about the eukaryotic cell cycle, and then we're going to start talking about chromosomes, genes, and alleles, which will lead us to our next topic, which is mitosis. So just a few outcomes here, um, and a little bit of bonus information. So let's remind ourselves about how chromosomes are made or what they are. So technically, chromatin is your DNA plus proteins. And we've previously talked about how proteins such as histones help organize the long strands of the double helix DNA and compact them because if you think about it, if you had a big long string and was moving around in the cell, it could easily get tangled and we don't want it to get tangled. So DNA is wrapped around these histone proteins making something called a nucleosome. And that nucleosome gets compacted and organized more and more and more. So this is all chromatin. A chromosome, right over here, the term is not supposed to be used until you're talking about um, a very compact chromatin that's ready for cell division. So really when it's We're going to talk about mitosis or meiosis. But I will just tell you right now, I always use chromosome. I never hardly ever use the word chromatin. So chromosome, chromatin, they're still made of the same um, components, DNA, and they're organizing proteins. Um, just technically chromosomes supposed to be used when we're talking about mitosis and meiosis. Okay. Let's talk about chromosomes. So these are chromosomes because they are compact and each one of these little lines is a separate chromosome. So this image is called a karyotype. So this is an image of your chromosomes. And so they take um, cells and um, they basically squash, it's called a nuclear squash, and you can um, get these images of the chromosomes and then you actually, um, it, they don't all look nice and organized like this in your nucleus, they're all over the place. And so you get this image and then um, the computer will kind of cut and paste each chromosome and line it up. And what you can see is chromosome 1 is the largest all the way down to chromosome 22, which is the smallest. So they're numbered based on their size. And this is for a human. And humans have 46 chromosomes. in 23 pairs. Okay. So you've got 22 and then your sex chromosomes is the 23rd pair. So chromosomes 20 or um, 1 through 22 are called autosomes. Auto also means just a body. So it's um, just kind of the regular chromosomes, and then the sex chromosomes are the X and the Y. And so females, biological females, have two X chromosomes. Biological males have an X and a Y. Okay. And when you get to genetics, you'll learn about variations on this because like I've said before every time we make a rule in biology 
there's exceptions. But what's happening, especially on the Y chromosome, are the traits for male. So kind of, you can kind of think like you're by default female, but if you have the Y, then you're going to produce male genitalia and um, other male um, attributes responding to um, the male hormones, um, things like that. So you have autosomes, which are numbers 1 through 22 in humans, sex chromosomes, XXXY. You can look at these by a karyotype. <clears throat> and humans are considered what we call diploid because our chromosomes are in pairs. All right, so let's let's look at another karyotype to illustrate this. Okay, so ploidy, ploidy describes the sets of number of sets of chromosomes. Okay. So you are diploid. You have two sets. Right, And so you can see here, chromosome 1, you have 2, chromosome 2, you have 2, chromosome 3, so you are in sets. In humans, all of what we call your somatic or body cells are diploid. So your skin, your liver cells, your muscle cells, your brain cells, all of those are diploid. They have two copies of every chromosome. Haploid, oh, and we represent diploid by 2n. Haploid is represented by n. So haploid means cells with half of the genetic information. So one set of each chromosome. So in a haploid cell, you would only have one chromosome 1, one chromosome 2, one chromosome 3, and one X chromosome. Haploid cells are your, I didn't give myself enough room to write this. I'm going to write it up here. Haploid cells are your gametes. You'll hear this term a lot, which is your egg or sperm. So humans get their chromosomes, one from mom, one set, I'm sorry, from mom, one set from dad. So the egg and the sperm, egg from mom, sperm from dad, has to have only half the number of chromosomes so that when you combine them, you become a diploid organism with two of everything. This will become more clear again when we do mitosis and meiosis and talk about genetics. Aneuploidy or aneuploid means you have a different number of a chromosome. So different than kind of standard. So in this case right here, this person has three copies of chromosome 21. And this is called trisomy. Tri means three, somy means chromosomes. So trisomy 21 describe someone with three copies of chromosomes, more commonly known as Down syndrome. And this person would have 46 plus one extra, so they would have 47 chromosomes. So if someone has trisomy, they're going to have more than the standard person. Okay. 
So we've got diploid, you have two sets. Haploid, you have half of that, so one set. Aneuploid, you have a different number. So I did um, 23andMe along with um, my parents several years ago. And this is kind of cool, I think. This is a picture of my chromosomes. So there's my chromosome one. Yes, I am female. I have two X chromosomes down here. But what I think is super cool is my mother's side of the family has Ashkenazi Jewish heritage. And that's shown in this green box. And if you look, only one of each of my chromosomes has this big green space. So that means these chromosomes with the green came from my mom. The Northern European, all this blue and Finnish, so uh, my father's heritage is Danish, right? so we're Northern European. So you can see um, these chromosomes come from my dad. So chromosome 9 is interesting. Um, in this case, this is for my dad, and there's no Ashkenazi Jewish markers on chromosome 9. Um, same with chromosome 21. But I think it's pretty cool. Like I've always known about genetics, but it's kind of cool to actually see a little bit of your own genetics. And so remember, this chromosome is representing thousands of genes along here. And so I have two copies of every gene, right? One copy from my mom, one copy from my dad, and you can see that they can be different, and that's what we're really going to focus on in genetics is this inheritance of these different traits from your parents. All right, so let's make sure you understand these concepts a little bit. So if I told you a chicken genome is 2n equals 78, what does that tell you about chickens? So I want you to pause for a second, think of some terms you could use. What does it mean about chickens? So 2n tells you that chickens are diploid. They have two copies of every chromosome. So since the diploid number is 78, if you take 78 divided by 2, chickens have 39 pairs of chromosomes. So just like us, chickens get 39 chromosomes from their mom and 39 from their dad to make a total of 78. So I want you to understand what these numbers mean. So what if I told you a mouse haploid number is 20? How many chromosomes in a mouse muscle cell? So pause, think about this. So if n equals 20, mice are diploid. So in all of their somatic cells, like a muscle cell, they have 40 chromosomes. So the only place mice are going to be haploid is in their egg or sperm. So 99.9% .9 of all the animals we talk about are diploid. Plants, you'll learn in genetics, can have really various. Some plants, strawberries, some are oct octoploid, which means they have eight of every chromosome. Um, I had a list. Hold on, where did I put it? Um, let's see. Um, so, oh, that's the only weird one I put. Um, one of the reasons that um, many animals cannot interbreed is because they have different numbers of chromosomes. So just an FYI, you don't have to know this, but I think it's kind of interesting. A donkey has 62 chromosomes, and a horse has 64 
chromosomes. And sometimes they breed and they make a mule which has 63. Okay, So it's kind of an in-between and that's why mules are considered sterile. Most of them cannot make offspring because they have this uneven number of um, chromosomes. And in case you're wondering, since we talk about uh, people evolving from um, or being very closely related to like gorillas, chimpanzees, these all have 48 chromosomes. So <clears throat> in evolution, people have 76. So we have a different number of chromosomes. Um, dogs have 78 chromosomes and wolves also have 78. And we know that dogs evolved from wolves, whereas a cat has 38 chromosomes, and so do tigers and lions. So it's kind of cool to look at these um, chromosome numbers. Okay, one more thought question. An elephant's diploid number is 56, but the elephant has trisomy 16. And I'm totally making this up. I don't know if elephants can have trisomy 16. How many chromosomes in the elephant's skin cells? So if the elephant has 56, but it has trisomy, it's going to have an extra chromosome. So it's going to have 57. Okay. So that's how you use um, these numbers. All right, let's talk about cell cycle. So cell cycle is also called cell division. And so when a cell gets a signal that it's time to divide, there are four stages it goes through. And we're going to start here with G1. And G1, um, I say it stands for growth. Some say it stands for gap, but gap always made it sound like it's not doing anything. And what it tells you right here is that during the G1 phase, the cell contents are being duplicated. Right? So you're getting more enzymes, you're getting more cytoplasm, you're um, doubling your organelles. Um, this takes about 10 hours um, on a 24-hour on a clock. Well, maybe not quite a 24-hour clock, but this takes about 10 hours for um, many cells to go through G1. So they're building up all their resources so that they can divide in half. So cell division means you're going from one cell to two cells. So you've got to double everything. S phase is what we have talked about. It's DNA replication. Oops. So everything we talked about, DNA replication, helicase and ligase and Okazaki fragments and leading and lagging strand, all of your 46 chromosomes are getting copied. This takes somewhere between six to eight hours. So it's very intense, um, and S stands for synthesis, so synthesis of DNA. After that happens, we have another gap or growth phase called G2, oops, not cap, but gap. And again, you can see you're making sure you're ready to divide. You're checking your chromosomes. We're going to talk more about this in just a second. But you want to make sure all is good before you go through the process of mitosis. And mitosis is the division of the chromosomes. And cytokinesis 
is the division of the cytoplasm and the final split of the cells. Mitosis and cytokinesis all together take about an hour. So it's pretty fast. So once everything is ready, the cell gets a signal, go, divide. So you're starting with one cell here. You're going through cell cycle. You're doubling your chromosomes, and we'll talk about these little X's in a minute. You're continuing to grow, you divide, and now you have two cells. And each cell can now go through cell division, or it can stop in G0, which is cell cycle arrest, which just means you're not dividing. So most of your cells are in G0. They're hanging out, they're doing their metabolism, they're doing what they need to do. One other thing, and I'm going to write on here FYI, you don't have to know any of this specifics, but I just want you to understand that during G1 and G2, your DNA is being scanned and repaired. So if you have any damage, say you were out in the sun, your skin cells are going to divide, and you've got some um, potential mutations due to, um, oh here, due to UV light. Or you have some potential mutations due to free radicals or x-rays or drugs. What's happening in your body during G1 and G2 is you have all these different DNA repair pathways that are looking for these DNA, this DNA damage and they're trying to fix it, okay? Including replication errors which would usually come in G2, but first in G1, let's go back for a second, your cell is making sure it's checking the DNA and repairing it. So you don't want to copy bad DNA, right? And in G2, you're checking your new DNA. I'm sorry, I should write checking out here. Ooh, that's it. Checking DNA and doing any repair because you don't want to divide and give a new cell bad DNA. Okay, So I just wanted to let you know, um, you'll probably learn about this in genetics, that there's a whole bunch of different ways that your DNA can be repaired in case you either have mistakes in replication or you have what we call lesions or DNA damage due to chemicals or physical things like being out in the sun. Your cell cycle is under control. It has three what we call checkpoints. The first checkpoint is here at G1. So G1, remember, is growth and your um, checkpoint means the cell cycle pauses Cell cycle pauses, and it's checking to make sure everything's okay. So you can read here at G1, you want to make sure your conditions are favorable for cell division. So you've grown enough, you've produced enough enzymes. You want to make sure the DNA is not damaged. You want to make sure you've got enough nutrients and growth factors to continue the cell cycle. So there's a little pause here. And then you start back up. And then there's a second um, checkpoint at G2. So you've gone through synthesis, you've copied your DNA, 
And now you want to make sure DNA is completely replicated, there's no mutations, you want to make sure you've got enough proteins and everything for mitosis, because remember mitosis goes really fast. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a third checkpoint <coughs> in mitosis, and we'll talk about this again when we talk about mitosis, but it's called the metaphase checkpoint. And you want to make sure all your chromosomes are attached to spindle fibers to be able to divide. So you don't know about this yet, I'm just putting it because this is part of cell cycle, and we'll talk about it um, some more. But you don't want to have your chromosomes not dividing correctly, or then you're going to have mutated cells that are produced. The way cell cycle control happens is with two types of proteins called tumor suppressors and proto-oncogenes. So these are proteins that control cell cycle. Okay. <clears throat> so your normal cell cycle, you have proto-oncogenes, which are called like the gas. So proto-oncogenes are the proteins that start and restart cell cycle. Because on the other hand, you have tumor suppressors, I'm just going to write TS, which stop the cell cycle. So they're like the brakes on a car. Proto-oncogenes are like the gas. So if we go back and look here, every time we have a checkpoint, we stop due to tumor suppressors, and then we restart by proto-oncogenes. Right, so it's just like coming to oncogenes, a stoplight, right? You got to put on the brakes, you got to stop, you got to wait till everything's ready, runs out of the intersections, and then you hit the gas and you can keep going. So that's what tumor suppressors and proto-oncogenes do. When you have mutations in these types of proteins, that can lead to disease, primarily cancer. So cancer is a loss of cell cycle control. Cancer becomes uncontrolled cell division. And the problem is we just talked about the checkpoints. So if you don't stop at the checkpoints and make sure you have enough resources to divide, or you make sure your DNA is replicated properly, if you just keep going through cell cycle without the stops, then you're going to have a greater chance of producing cells with issues. And cells with issues lead to disease. So what this is trying to show you is if you have a proto-oncogene mutation, we now call it oncogene, which is cancer causing. And it's like having too much gas. So you're flying through all those red lights. Okay, that's dangerous, right? Not good, not healthy. Okay. <clears throat> Tumor suppressors, if you have a mutation, what they normally do is stop the cell cycle, and again, now you have no breaks, so you're still flying through the red light. So you have uncontrolled cell division, you're not stopping, you're not checking everything to make sure it's okay, you're just going and going and dividing and dividing and that is what cancer is. So I just put these slides up here just because you've probably, you may have heard or you might in the future hear of some of these. So tumor suppressor genes, one that you've probably heard of is BRCA1, which is the breast cancer gene. So this has a problem with cell cycle it's actually part of DNA repair, and so people keep accumulating mutations if they have a mutation 
in BRCA1 or BRCA2. And this is one of the types of inherited cancers, which doesn't mean you're inheriting cancer, but you're inheriting a greater risk of cancer because you have a mutation in this tumor suppressor gene. Retinoblastoma, RB, and P53, as you get into cell biology, you'll hear about those a lot. Proto-oncogenes, and oncogenes you probably haven't heard about much, but you will in cell biology. RAS and MYC are um, some important ones. And again, I just put this up here as um, kind of a preview of, of terms you may come across later in your biology career. Um, and again, proto-oncogene is the normal protein and it's called an oncogene when it's mutated. Tumor suppressors, we don't get an extra name for them, um, but oncogenes and proto-oncogenes we do. And I have no idea, I don't know who named them. Okay, so you got a little bonus information about cancer in relation to cell cycle. The last thing I want to talk about is chromosomes because this is going to um, lead us back or lead us forward, I don't know, to mitosis. So remember your chromosome is your DNA with your histone proteins. We've talked before about telomeres, which are the ends of your chromosomes. Another term on here that we will come back to again but I want to bring it up here, it's called a centromere. The centromere um, holds the two sister, bear with me, I'll define these in a minute, chromatids together and is where the spindle fibers attach for mitosis and meiosis. Okay. So remember what we had is we had a chromosome. We're going to draw like this, a chromatin chromosome, and say in G1, and then in S phase it replicated, so we have two. But they're held together at the centromere. So that's why they look like an X. So it's just a place they're held together and they look like that still in G2 and then after mitosis you'll have two cells with individual chromosomes again. Okay, so Chromatid is half of a duplicated chromosome. Again, very important to keep these straight when you take genetics. When you undergo DNA replication, these are identical, right? You've made an identical copy. So the chromatids are identical, and they're called sister, where am I? Sister chromatids. and they are identical. Okay. <coughs> so, again, more vocabulary to put in. So you've got your chromosome, it's replicated into two sister chromatids, and eventually will be um, separated back into individual chromosomes. genes and alleles. Okay. We've talked about genes because we've talked about transcription. 
entrance <clears throat> transcription of a gene leads to a protein. Alleles are different versions of a gene. So, <clears throat> you have your parent one and parent two. You got your mom, <clears throat> you got your dad. And your chromosome pair is going to have the same type of genes. So, you have a gene for temperature regulation. Well, you don't because, well, you do, but you don't have a gene for fur texture or fur production. This is from a mouse. You do have genes for eye color. Okay. So, those are your genes. The version, the allele, is say the blue allele for eye color and the brown allele. So the gene is eye color, that's the general characteristic, and the version they got from their mom was to have blue eyes and from their dad was to have brown eyes. And that's what we're going to talk about in genetics. Sometimes these alleles might be the same and a lot of times the alleles are different. Okay, This is all genetics. Okay. So remember that you are diploid, which means you have two copies of every gene. Right? So you have two copies of every gene for eye color and every gene for hair color and hair texture and skin color and every gene that is needed to produce liver cells and every gene that's needed to produce um, <clears throat> muscle cells. Okay. That's where diploid really comes in. Okay, just a couple more slides. I kind of got this probably out of order. Um, this is again showing you replicated chromosomes just a little bit uh, more detail. So we will talk about homologous pairs um, when we talk about um, mitosis and genetics, but a homologous pair is basically the same chromosome, one from each parent. Homo means same. Okay, so you have one from dad, one from mom. These are showing you the A gene, gene, with the big A allele and the little a allele. Okay, so I'm trying to reinforce these concepts. Once you have DNA replication happening for mitosis or meiosis, now you have sister chromatids that are identical. So you've copied the big A and the big A, and here you have another set of sister chromatids that are identical. You have the little a and little a, and we call these still homologs or homologous pairs <coughs> because they say, contain the same type of genetic information, but they're not identical, right? So your homologous pair here is also your homologous pair after replication. We will reiterate this again in mitosis and genetics. All right, so I just wanted to, to, again, show you the connection between cell cycle and chromosomes. So here you are, we're going to start right here. You've got one chromosome. You go through G1. You go through S. Now you have a duplicated sister chromatids. You go through G2. The point of mitosis is to separate 
these sister chromatids into two cells. Okay, and now you've made what we call daughter cells. So these daughter cells should be identical and they're ready to either rest or go through a uh, cell cycle again. I've duplicated. Okay, so we're going to be drawing lots of chromosomes when we talk about mitosis. So I want you to get a good feel about when everything's happening in the cell cycle. All right, so your objectives or um, outcomes for this video was to describe the functions of each phase of the cell cycle we've talked about. Describe in your own words what's happening. So these are, these are pretty similar. I probably should have worded them a little bit different. But everything in your own words. Remember, doing it in your own words is the way you learn and show me your learning. Be able to compare and contrast a chromosome and a gene and an allele. So telling me what the difference and the similarities between these are. So I'm not going to give you this answer. I want you to think about it. You might see it on a quiz or exam. And the bonus part about this video was you got to learn a little bit about cancer, oncogenes, and tumor suppressors because they all relate to cell cycle. All right, that's all I got for you.